you did something that caused him so much pain, so much suffering. Len Spears would start giving an eighth grader alcohol. The saddest thing was that I had always just wanted a father who loved me exactly as I was. The book is a nightmare for him because of how it throws the whole family into chaos. Britney Spears has a memoir coming out. Do you think you will be in it? We might finally know why Britney Spears shaved her head in 2007. Britney Spears is shedding light on her time in a conservatorship, discussing how her father controlled what she ate and how she did her hair. He also forced security guards to watch her take her daily drugs. On top of exposing her family, she's also sharing the devastating moments that fueled her downfall. Nobody is safe from Britney's book, so let's get into it. One thing that's clear about Britney's new book is that she is not holding back. She is telling us her entire story, the good parts and the bad parts. She was quoted saying, over the past 15 years, or even at the start of my career, I sat back while people spoke about me and told my story for me. It is finally time for me to raise my voice and speak out, and my fans deserve to hear it directly from me. No more conspiracy, no more lies, just me owning my past, present, and future. She's even getting into the moments where she was wrong, like when she admits to cheating on Justin Timberlake with Wade Robson. But it wasn't like this big affair. Brittany admits that she kissed Wade while dating Justin Timberlake, who she says initiated their breakup over text. After the split, she felt like she was portrayed as a harlot who had broken the heart of America's golden boy, adding that she was in a comatose in Louisiana while he was happily running around Hollywood. Britney recalls her moment with Wade Robson. They were at a Spanish bar and they were drinking and making out. Supposedly, she and Justin worked through it. They agreed to move past the infidelity given the years that she was loyal to him. But of course, he goes on to release the music video for Cry Me A River. This was one year after their breakup and there was a Britney lookalike in the video suggesting that she had been, you know, unfaithful to him, really painting her as the villain. After years and years and years of rumors swirling, Britney Spears admits she did indeed cheat on Justin Timberlake with choreographer Wade Robson. But it was nothing more than a kiss and took place after she found out Justin had already cheated. And honestly, I wouldn't even consider this a spoiler because she admitted it in that Diane Sawyer interview. She just didn't name drop Wade. She has always owned up to what she has done wrong. And I think she's also tried to push that she is a victim herself, being exploited by her team, by the world, and by Justin. Okay, you can bop me. I have to ask a couple of things about Justin. Okay, of course. He has gone on television and pretty much said you broke his heart. You did something that caused him so much pain, so much suffering. What did you do? <clears throat> I was upset. I was upset for a while. We both... He's left the impression that, that you weren't faithful, that you betrayed the relationship. I think everyone has a side to their story, and... Um, to make them feel a certain way, to make them feel, you know, and I'm not technically saying he's wrong, but I'm not technically saying he's right either. Britney has had really hard breakups throughout her career, especially after her split from Kevin Federline. Britney said her drug of choice was Adderall, something that she said made her high, but she found it more appealing and it gave her a few hours of feeling less depressed. She also said that she was never as wild as the press made her out to be. She claimed some of her eccentric behavior was from being out of my mind with grief. This was following the death of her aunt in addition to postpartum depression. When her children were taken away from her, her and Kevin started to fight for custody, she really started to go through it because she was really nothing without her kids. And you've seen throughout this conservatorship that she's always battled to be a bigger part in their lives. Something really bizarre that she mentions about her parents is that she was allowed to drink back in eighth grade. This was after her time in the Mickey Mouse Club and she actually describes this part of her life as beautifully normal. She was able to go to high school, homecoming, prom, and she even had cocktails with her mom when she was in the eighth grade. 
She said, for fun, starting when I was in eighth grade, my mom and I would make the two hour drive from Kentwood to Mississippi. And while we were there, we would drink daiquiris. We called it our toddies. I love that I was able to drink with my mom every now and then. The way we drank was nothing like how my father did. When he drank, he grew more depressed and shut down. We became happier and more alive and adventurous. And while I understand like, you know, drinking with your parent, it could be a, a moment that's a little bit young and they're driving like two hours away to do it. Gen X grew up with their parents giving them alcohol. Um, I think I was given my first beer at like seven years old. That doesn't make it right. It doesn't make it right at all. And so if you have a mother and she has a daughter who is the daughter of an alcoholic and a vicious one at that, it's extremely poor parenting that Lynn Spears would start giving an eighth grader alcohol on a regular basis. And it also sort of shines a light on what a terrible mother Lynn Spears truly is. I think we can all agree that Lynn has been a terrible mother. I mean, remember her book, Through the Storm? But Jamie Spears, Britney's father, is the real beast here. And Britney even believes that he only saw her as a cash flow. Britney Spears has recalled how her father, Jamie, tauntingly declared, I'm Britney Spears now, after he was controversially appointed the conservator of her finances and personal life. In her memoir, she has shared heartbreaking details about the way in which her every action was monitored during her conservatorship arguing that nothing she had done prior warranted her being treated like she was a bank robber. Brittany opens up about her unfair treatment and the fact that they saw her as too sick to make decisions for herself, even basic decisions, yet she was healthy enough to work nonstop. Brittany also claims that her father threatened her with court if she didn't agree to another stint in rehab back in 2018, and that she would look like an idiot if she refused. Recalling the early days of her conservatorship, she wrote that she was too sick to choose her own boyfriend, yet somehow healthy enough to appear on sitcoms and morning shows, and to perform for thousands of people in a different part of the world every week. Brittany writes, from that point on, I began to think that Jamie saw me as put on earth for no other reason than to help their cash flow. And to be honest, Brittany has always felt like a prisoner. She's made it clear in documentaries that we've seen, and she's never really been happy with this type of management and this control that her family has on her. I've been through a lot this year. Well, actually the past two or three years, and my trust has really been better. I've definitely grown up. You know, I'm very weary of a lot of things, very protective of myself. You're guarded, you know, you have to be that way. Otherwise, you get taken advantage of and get in situations like I did the past year. I had totally lost my way. I lost myself. I never wanted to become one of those prisoner people. I've always wanted to feel free, get in my car and go and not let people make me feel like I have to stay in my home. It is horrific, the details that she's revealing in this book. She claims that she lived under lockdown during her conservatorship, comparing it to being a total monk. According to Brittany, she had parental controls put on her phone and was given a prepackaged envelope of medicine that she had to take in front of security guards. I mean, that sounds like prison. Remember when she spoke to the judge for the first time? She said, ma'am, my dad and anyone involved in this conservatorship and my management who played huge roles in punishing me when I said no, they should be in jail. And it seemed like Jamie figured out how to punish Brittany because every time she refused, he would send her away. The star kept fighting on as much as she could behind the scenes, claiming the situation came to a head in 2018 when she was forced to spend more than three months in rehab following disputes with her father. She recalled how it started with her having to undergo mental health evaluations, which led to the claim that she needed to go in for a treatment for $60,000 a month. She said, my father said if I didn't go, then I'd have to go to court and that I'd be embarrassed. She also claims that Jamie allegedly threatened to make her look like an idiot if she failed to cooperate. So we're really getting a full picture picture into what Jamie has put Brittany through and how much he exploited her for financial gain. She says, for me, the saddest thing was that I had always just wanted a father who loved me exactly as I was. Someone who said, I love you, period. You can do anything and I will love you unconditionally. And the fact that her father did what he did to her. Obviously, no one knows what goes on behind closed doors with Brittany. This is just so sad and I'm so sad to read this memoir to hear about everything that happened with Brittany, but I think it's great that she's finally getting a chance to tell her story on her terms the way that she wants to. 
What I'm really interested in learning about is what she went through in these facilities. She was prescribed lithium, which is very intense. It's a mood stabilizing medicine usually reserved for the treatment of certain mental illnesses like mania, hypomania, bipolar disorder. She said they kept me locked up against my will for months. I couldn't go outside. I couldn't drive a car. I had to give blood weekly. I couldn't take a bath in private. I couldn't shut the door to my room. But thankfully, her stay at the rehab facility provided her an opportunity to learn about about the viral Free Britney movement. She said it was the most amazing thing I've ever seen in my life, adding that it meant so much to her, especially in the beginning. But she adds, however, watching those documentaries about her life was rough. But she does believe that everyone's heart was in the right place. It just hurt to see some of those in her inner circle speak out without consulting her first. And she's probably hinting at Felicia, who was her close assistant for so many years and who was a big part of these documentaries. Britney added that a key issue was that these projects did not consider what she must have thought or felt. Quote, it felt like every day there was another documentary about me on yet another streaming service. But despite all of this media coverage, the biggest relief came when she learned that her father no longer had control in her life. She said, I felt relief sweep over me. The man who had scared me as a child and ruled over me as an adult who had done more than anyone to undermine my self-confidence was no longer in control of my life. She said that she has been left with both physical and emotional damage as a result of more than a decade of mistreatment. Quote, migraines are just one part of the physical and emotional damage I have now that I'm out of the conservatorship. I don't think my family understands the real damage that they did. Another moment in her life that she speaks about is her feature in the movie Crossroads from back in 2002. She actually claims that she struggled not because of anyone on set, but because she started method acting which is when she's in character all the time and she actually started to connect to lucy and she started to dissociate from herself britney and she had a hard time trying to figure out who she is she said living that way being half yourself and half a fictional character is messed up after a while you don't know what's real anymore she actually wrote that she hopes she never gets close to that occupational hazard again. So I don't think we'll see her acting anytime soon. I think that music will always be my heart and my soul because that's, that's me. That's what I've always done since I was a little girl. But um, I have to say, it's not bad seeing yourself up there on the big screen. It's very cool. <laughs> and since I was little, that's something that I've dreamt of too. So it's, and it's a new territory for me. It's so different. So it's fun. When People talk about my private life. I know that, that, you know, as a celebrity, that's what goes along with what you do. You just have to, you know, accept that. That's what happens. But, um, you know, if they ask about it in interviews and stuff, I just say it's none of your business. <laughs> Brittany really went through it back in 2008 when she was put under a 5150 hold. She wrote that she became like a robot, a sort of child robot. I had been so infantilized that I was losing pieces of what made me feel like myself. The conservatorship stripped me of my womanhood and made me into a child. I became more of an entity than a person on stage. I had always felt music in my bones and my blood. They stole that from me. She said that her father and her team having control over her body and money for so long made her feel sick, saying that she felt like a shadow of herself. Brittany added that she believes if she had been allowed to live her life, she would have eventually followed her heart and come out of this the right way and it would have worked out. That she didn't need a 5150 and this conservatorship and this amount of control, she just was going through a real life struggle. And it does seem like she was treated like a child. I mean, everything was controlled. Her medications, um, her hair. She had to have long hair. She had to work out. Brittany wrote that her father, Jamie, who's not much of a looker, criticized her appearance and repeatedly told her that she looked fat and that she was going to have to do something about it. Quote, feeling like you're never good enough is a soul crushing state for being a child. He drummed that message into me as a girl. And then even after I accomplished so much, he was continuing to do that to me. Being over overworked in that facility of that rehab place, the, the rehab place will see me. He told me I should keep it to myself, really. I would personally like to, actually, I know I'm, I've had grown with a personal relationship with Sam, my lawyer. I've been talking to him like three times um, a week now. We've kind of built a relationship, but I haven't really had the opportunity by my own self to actually handpick the, my own lawyer by myself. Um, and I would like to be able to do that. Um, I would like to um, also... Um, the main reason why I'm here is because I want to end the conservatorship without having to be evaluated. I've done a lot of research, ma'am, and there's a lot of judges who do end conservatorships for people without them having to be evaluated all the time. Brittany knew that her situation wasn't right, but she couldn't get 
out of it until she had her opportunity and she took it by speaking to that judge. And she says that she thought to herself that it was almost funny how she won these awards and she made these albums, yet she was so incapacitated that she had to be controlled by her father. She wrote, there is no way to behave like an adult since they wouldn't treat me like an adult, so I would regress and act like a little girl, but then my adult self would step back in, which maybe explains some of her behavior nowadays. I mean, some people think that she behaves, you know, certainly on Instagram, and maybe it's because she does have this regression to like a little girl because of how she was controlled. She said they wanted me to be wild on stage the way they told me to be and then to be a robot the rest of the time. Quote, it was death to my creativity as an artist. I don't like to talk about the 2007 moment where she shaved her head, but she speaks about it saying that it was her way of pushing back and taking little control over her life. She said, I'd been eyeballed so much growing up. I've been looked up and down and had people telling me what they thought of my body since I was a teenager. Shaving my head and acting out were my ways of pushing back. She continued, with my head shaved, everyone was scared of me, even my mom. And like I mentioned earlier, her aunt had died she just had her two babies and she's having postpartum and like they're separated from her so she doesn't have that affection and love with them so really she was going through it mentally and she needed this break one person ran into her after she had shaved her head and asked her wait Brittany you shaved your head her answer was I don't want anybody touching my head I don't want anyone touching my hair I'm sick of people touching my hair and that's probably because she just was sick of constantly being controlled and her image being judged and being told exactly what to do at every moment Moment. We might finally know why Britney Spears shaved her head in 2007. It was one of the biggest paparazzi moments of all time. When Britney gave herself a buzz cut in front of 70 photographers after leaving rehab. But in an excerpt from her upcoming memoir obtained by People, Britney talks about how it was her way of dealing with being eyeballed so much growing up. She writes, I'd been looked up and down, had people telling me what they thought of my body since I was a teenager. Shaving my head and acting out were my ways of pushing back. Now there's a lot of people who are concerned about this book, not just Justin Timberlake. Because Christina Aguilera recently did an interview where she was asked about this book and she shared her thoughts. Jimmy actually mentions that he hopes he's mentioned in the book for whatever reason, and Christina notes that she would rather it be Jimmy than her. I'm sure that Christina will be mentioned in the book because these two have been compared throughout their career, and there's even rumors that Justin had been hooking up with Christina Aguilera. Christina did unfollow Britney on Instagram after there was a comment that Britney made that kind of sounded like she was body shaming Christina. Brittany then later clarified her comments saying that she would never intentionally body shame anyone. Nonetheless, I think there's bigger things that Christina needs to be worried about, probably her relationship with Justin and how that will play out. You know, Brittany Spears has a memoir coming out. Do you think you will be in it? Has she called you and said, hey, um, heads up? Dude, I don't know. There's a chapter know. about you. <laughs> Are you hoping that you're in it? I don't know. <laughs> Am I hoping? I mean, I'm hoping that, you know, everything is all good with her and everything's yeah. beautiful. So, yeah. you know, I mean, yeah, I think the future should be celebrated. And Sure. Yes. If you had to choose between being in it and not being in it. <laughs> One person we know we're going to learn more about is Justin Timberlake, and we started the video talking about him and how Brittany had cheated on him, but there's a lot that he's going to be held accountable for. His wife says that, you know, this was a million years ago, she's brushing it all off, and Justin's trying to play like he's the good guy, saying that he owns who he was when he was with Brittany. But this book is a nightmare for him because of how it throws the whole family into chaos. The timing stings just as much as the revelation itself. Justin Timberlake's family has been thrown into chaos after Brittany Britney Spears revealed that he wanted her to get an abortion. Source also says they're unsure if Timberlake even told Jessica Beale about the abortion. This is something that is incredibly shocking to hear about your husband. The source says the book is a nightmare for him because of how it throws the whole family into chaos. The timing stings just as much as the revelation itself. Justin is working on new music at this moment and he also wanted to bring NSYNC back so this timing definitely hurts him. Source also says that Jessica is reeling after this shocking revelation as old wounds are reopened. Justin's career may not be able to recover. And it looks like his PR team is working hard to try and clear his name because these are all tweets that say the same thing and they're defending him and so people think that these are bots. 
So this book is big news, but we won't be seeing Britney talk about it publicly anytime soon. Britney won't do a TV press tour to promote her new book. The singer has made the decision to skip any sit down interviews. And in my opinion, she really doesn't need to do any interviews to sell this book. It's going to sell. She was asked to appear on 60 Minutes. There was even an opportunity to do an interview with Oprah, but none of them will happen. People Magazine did a special about Britney, but all of those questions were answered through email. Reports write that the book is going to sell off its own power alone. Those around her also understand it would open up a lot of problematic doors if she were to jump back into interviews and getting hit with personal questions. Honestly, the way that Britney is handling this is perfect, and I think that it's time for her to tell her story on her own terms, and that doesn't involve, you know, TV interviews. So good for her. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in a new one soon. Bye, guys.